I hope everyone is able to see my screen. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have one small problem with my Linux machine. I don't know what's the problem. I am not able to connect to the Linux machine. So let's try to uh, do the discussion using the Windows for today. Okay. I'll check that problem and I'll come back to you tomorrow. Yeah, but anyway, that shouldn't have because anyway today my plan is not to do any lab. Okay, so let me just first try to talk about the directory structure which got created yesterday. So the part where we had installed the JBoss application server, this is the part where I had installed the JBoss application server. The part where you had installed your JBoss application server, we call it as JBoss Home. Clear? The part where you are trying to install the JBoss application server, we call it as JBoss Home. In your exam, by any chance if you are giving an exam, JBoss EAP exam, they will ask you to they will ask you to change the JBoss home to some other part because you used to have all the binaries here now they will ask you to change the binaries always remember that the location or the path where you had got all the uh, the location the path where you got all your executable files or the path where you had copied your executable files the, that particular one we call it as JBoss Home. And initially, my JBoss Home used to be E JBoss 62 JBoss EAP 62, but now I have changed my JBoss Home to this particular path. So the always remember that JBoss Home is nothing but it's a location where you had installed your JBoss application server. So when you go inside your JBoss Home, you try to see a couple of files, couple of folders. It's not mandatory that you know about each and every one of them, but certain folders are really, really important and mandatory for us to know. So, if you see the first one in the list, okay, we have something called as a welcome content. The moment you launch your JBoss application server, either in a domain mode or the standalone mode, the first screen which comes in the GUI we call that one or the content for that is fetched from the welcome hyphen content. If you are trying to do the JBoss application server handling, you can comfortably remove the welcome content. Clear? Welcome content is nothing but it's something like let's say that I'm trying to visit the Yahoo page. So www.yahoo.com I click. The moment I click the yahoo.com, a welcome page will come for me. I'm trying to do an internet banking login. So what do I do? I say uh, onlinesba.com, netbanking.onlinesba.com. So the moment I say netbanking.onlinesba.com, a screen will come for me, which is the first page. That is nothing but your welcome page. Okay? You go to your restaurants. I'm not sure how many of. Uh, I don't think so in US or in Canada. I had this scenario, but yep, in India, if you go to the couple of restaurants, they give you something called as a welcome page. Welcome drink, free of cost. If you are from Hyderabad, uh, if you see the this typical restaurants like Chetneys or uh, Oris, okay, if you're trying to host a party, then they give you something at free of cost called as a welcome drink. So welcome drink is nothing but they are trying to uh, uh, introduce you to the uh, restaurant or to the menu. So before you try to do that, they'll give you as a free. In a similar way. When you are trying to launch any particular page, the first page, the home page which you are trying to see is nothing but a welcome page. Whatever the content that is there inside the welcome page for the JBoss gets loaded from welcome-content referred in the configuration folder. So either you operate the JBoss application server in a standalone mode or a domain mode, whatever the content, whatever the information you are trying to see in the welcome page, all of them would be loaded from here. Clear? Okay. 
So if you'd like to modify the content, I mean, uh, let's say if you'd like to, uh, we are, uh, uh, how can I ask this? So let's say if you have an application like uh, uh, CAMS, so we want to have a welcome page for that, um, uh, customized welcome page for that. So is it going to be written in uh, HTML and then place it there, or how will this work? Uh? Okay, two things were here. Okay, if you're trying to talk with reference to 3 tier architecture, Generally, we keep that one in the web server, okay, in the, inside the EDC docs folder. But if you want that one to be uh, reflected or updated inside the JBoss, okay, then you can comfortably keep it in the welcome hyphen content and make a couple of changes. We'll talk about that a little bit later. How do we make the changes? Okay, we'll talk about it. But whatever the welcome content you have got, you can, can copy it into the welcome hyphen content folder, okay, and make the changes in the corresponding standalone.xml or domain.xml uh, and restart the server instances, it will be affected. But how, where do we make inside the domain.xml or standalone.xml? I'll talk about it a little bit later. Okay, but are, are you guys clear about what exactly is meant by welcome hyphen content? Sure. Yes. Uh, how about you, Rajesh? You're clear? Yes, sir. Okay, good. The next one is the uninstall. Self-explanatory, understandable, and known to everyone. If you want to uninstall JBoss application server, okay, rather than you do an RM minus RF, invoke this uninstaller executable file, which will uninstall the JBoss application server. Once the JBoss application server is uninstalled, later, if you want to make any changes, okay. Uh, or later if you want to you see some other folders or the files that are already present you can execute an rm minus r at that time clear then standard and uh, domain I'll come a little bit later but modules modules is nothing but if you see the, unlike the previous version okay in jbos application server eap 6.0 onwards okay if you want to reset your class path or if you want your the jar files, class part related jar files to be loaded, rather than keeping it in ABC location and make the difference uh, and have it individually for each and every system, subsystem, what JBoss people from EAP 6.0 onwards, what they did is that they created a folder called as a modules folder. And whatever the jar files you have got, okay, you have to keep all of your jar files, okay, inside the modules folder, okay. This is the okay. Yeah. This is the these are the two buffers I have got. So once you have it into the model directory, you need to create an another XML file called as a model.xml file, and inside which you need to make the reference of that. Clear? If you see, unlike the older versions, how do we set, uh, set this one? Or how do we use the models? I'll explain you. I'll, uh, we have a session for that. I'll talk about it at that time. But remember that if you have got any jar files which need to be provided as part of the class path by default from JBoss EAP 6.2, okay, you need to copy that one answer the models folder by creating your own folder or in any one of the folder. And whatever the list of jar files you have created and copied, you need to refer them inside the uh, modules.xml file. Clear? Am I clear? Yes. How about this? Okay. Let me yes. uh, give you explain you. How many of you are from web? How many of you know WebSphere? Does any one of you every one of you knows WebSphere? Yep, uh, yeah. I don't know. Myself. You know, okay. Pravin knows about it. How about you, Sujit? You know WebSphere? I know a little bit. Basic knowledge you have, no? Yes. Okay. That's that's more than that. So I have got an application uh, called as an uh, metrics application, a simple metrics application, which will give me a metrics uh, information. This, okay, I have. Uh, 
I've tried to deploy it in my web sphere. It's giving me an ex ex exception, Java dot class dot not found exception. So the moment we see no class definition found error, it's clearly an issue of the class path. So what you did is that you got a jar file or you got two to three jar files, okay, uh, which is used to uh, resolve this issue. So this one, okay, you need to say to the WebSphere that, hey WebSphere, whenever you are trying to load the application called as a matrix, please ensure that this corresponding jar files are loaded. So what we generally do, okay, we go into the WebSphere application server, create a shared library reference, okay, and that shared library, inside the shared library, we keep this list of jar files and refer this shared library for the application. So that the class path related issues are resolved. In a similar way, over here also in the JBoss application server also, whenever your application loads, it needs certain jar files as part of the class path. These applications might be related to the JBoss or might be the deployment files you're deploying it in the JBoss. So whatever the class path related jar files are there, the way the JBoss has implemented is that they say that, okay, boss, for all of your class path related jar files, I created a folder called as a models. When you go inside your models folder, there are a couple of directories which are related to the JBoss, okay? You can copy your jar files inside them and make a reference of them in the model.xml file or you create your own folder. You create your own folder, okay? Copy your jar files inside them and create a model.xml file so that I'll refer when the moment you put this information in your configuration file, I'll try to load all the class path related jar files from here. Clear? Anyone? Any questions? Very, very important. Silence can assume everyone is clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Perfect. So after the models folder, the next important folder for us to know is the bin folder. So if you see the bin folder, okay, into the bin folder, n number of executable files. It's not mandatory that you know about each and every one of them, but a couple of them are mandatory for you to know. For example, init.d is the one which will set your JBoss application server to run as a service. JBoss-cli.xml file is a XML file which will be loaded whenever you're invoking the JBoss application server in a uh, CLI mode. CLI is nothing but like how we have a WS admin scripting tool. Even JBoss application server also has a command line interaction tool or a script mode called as a CLI. Anyone and everyone who knows the Unix closing their eyes can work with the JBoss CLI. So like any other application server, WebLogic has a WS scripting. Okay, WebSphere has a uh, WS admin utility. In a similar way, JBoss application server has a CLI. Whatever the, the moment you invoke the CLI saying <coughs> JBoss-CLI, all of its configuration will be loaded from JBoss-CLI.xml file. Never and ever change it without taking the backup. Okay, the wall.sh file or wall.cmd file is a file which will try to encrypt the password you have got, okay, whatever the list of text file, which is mostly the password, if you want to encrypt them, okay, you can use the wall.sh file to do that. Clear? Okay. Am I clear? Yes, sure. Okay. The next one we have here is standalone.sh and standalone.com. Okay, if you see the standalone.sh, okay, and standalone.com, okay, 
these are the standon.com is a executable file which will launch the standalone related configuration and standalone.sh will allow the JBoss applicant server to run in the standalone mode. At any point of the time, if you want your JBoss applicant server okay, to be started in a standalone mode, then you need to execute the standalone.sh. Okay? And if you want your standalone related configurations to be updated or to be listed or to be worked, okay, then you use the standalone.com.sh file. Clear everyone? Okay. Okay. Similar to the standalone.sh and standalone.com, okay, we have something called as a domain.sh and domain.com.sh. So domain.sh or domain.com.sh file is the one, okay, which will try to launch the JBoss application server in a domain mode, okay, and if you want the Hello. Uh -huh. 